it's all the same, you know, how it looks out there along the highway. It is. That's funny. I mean, not funny, ha ha, but the other kind of funny. What would you call that? Funny strange, I guess. Or odd. Funny odd. It's just that, I don't know, I didn't expect that things would seem so familiar. It is funny. To me, at least. So, how's Dad? Good, probably. I'll bet he's good. Dad is always good. He's a good dad. I'm surprised he didn't come, that he left all this up to you. It's kind of unlike him. Unusual, anyway, that he'd do that. Oh, wait. He's out of town, isn't he? Didn't you say something about that on the phone? I can't remember now. I think you did. Said he wouldn't be able to make it. Not that he called me or told me himself. That would have been very, you know, undad-like of him. But I guess I do recall now. He is not home. Where'd he go again? Milwaukee? Is this a Milwaukee week? Yeah, I guess it must be. You know, I don't get that. Not at all. Why he insists on going up there, driving up every other weekend to see grandma and grandpa. They don't care if he does. Don't even really want him to. I can tell. Times I've been up there with them, <laughs> they just sit there on that floral couch of theirs and they just stare at you. Through you, really. That would be a more accurate description of it. Them staring through you. Maybe it's her cataracts or whatever, or that blood thinning medicine he's on. But it's like, you're there. They can sense someone's in the room, but they can't quite make them out. Or they're just not very nice people. That could be it too. They could be crabby old mean people who don't give a shit about anybody and just because they act all frail and cute doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> because we age, right? We get older. But that doesn't change who we are, does it? No way. It doesn't. Obviously. I had a little time on my hands up there to think about stuff. <clears throat> yep, lots of time. It was an interesting place, a lot different than the last one. Really, pretty cool. Which I've been meaning to thank you both for, honestly. I even made up a little note, hand painted and everything in my art class that thank you and dad for getting me set up in such a nice facility. Never sent it though. Sorry. Meant to, but, you know, didn't. It was cool, though, their campus. And the boys were cute. So you two really did a bang-up job. Thanks, Mom. I thought they had a good program, too. Maybe a little too heavy on the higher power stuff. Perhaps a bit too much of that nonsense. But overall, pretty good. Nice staff, tasty food. <laughs> I even like the name. Twin Oaks. Quite pretty. Like a, a little bed and breakfast place or something nestled there in a picturesque setting. Although none of us, when we were walking around the grounds or on hikes and stuff, <laughs> we didn't see any oaks. Not a one. Oh, you know what was funny? This one time, you'll like this. There was this movie on in the rec room, this old black and white film on the TV. <laughs> and you know me, right? I usually run the other way when you and Dad are watching that crap. Gone with the wind or whatever. Man, I'm out of there. But I plopped down for a second, just for a minute or two to sneak a little popcorn. 
I've really got the munchies from all the restrictions they've got me on. Like, no cigarettes, Mom. You didn't tell me that before you guys shipped me off there. Left that one out, didn't you? Whatever. Anyway, so this show is on, and as it's happening, we all notice really quickly that the movie's taking place at this roadside cafe called the same thing, Twin Oaks. Isn't that weird? Yeah, so it all happens, well, mostly all, in and around this cafe slash home for this married lady and some drifter guy kill her husband. Basically for love. I mean, they end up getting his establishment and taking all of his money and everything, but basically, it's just for love. But isn't that cool, Mom, that we were watching it, my peers and I, at Twin Oaks? And the story's meant to be going on at Twin Oaks. <laughs> Although, obviously a different Twin Oaks. Well, we all thought it was pretty funny. And after? We shared a smoke before bed. A marijuana smoke. I know that's probably hard for you to hear, but I'm supposed to be more honest now. It's part of my sobriety thingy to be candid. But anyhow, that was all before. Before I got things together. I mean, in a place like that, you can get anything you want, or to do. You can do just about whatever you'd like, if you want it bad enough. And that night, I did. But I'm better now, totally all better. You believe that, don't you, Mom? I know Dad does. He told me, last family session he came to, he told me that. He looks me right in the eye, which for him is right about here. And he looks at me and he smiles, maybe even tearing up a little bit. And he says to me, he says in that one quiet voice of his, honey, I believe you. I do. Which was so cool. I mean, like, moving, almost. I was almost moved by that. I was. And now, here I am, out and clean and feeling pretty great. I just think, I don't know. I think it could be pretty easy for me to fit back in at home, in a way. I know the twins are off at school now and all, so that'll be different. But I just imagine that it could be a pretty easy fit for me to get myself into the groove, to register down at the community college next semester, maybe get a job even, my old job back, that sort of deal. I could do that, absolutely. I know that's what you're hoping. Dad told me last week, he says that you guys are really pulling for me. He used that term, which just about kills me. I think the only way to prove to you guys that your money was well spent is to do my best to become a more truthful person, like they said to do my best to say what I feel, to mean what I say. Yeah, at least with one person anyway. That's one of their ideas, that you start it small and be completely on the level always with one person. That way, no matter what else you do, you are always going to be true to that chosen individual. They stand by it, the counselors up there, Say that it's the best way to get yourself back on the road. And I picked you, Mom. Isn't that neat? Out of everybody, I picked you. And so, 
That's why. Well, I just need to be open with you here. Here in the car, where you can't run into the next room, or slam the door in my face, or throw yourself down on the bed and start crying. This is the place to be honest, right? I think so. I'm going to do everything in my power to use again. I know I am. I can feel it. I've done the time there, up there at Twin Oaks, and I've sat through the groups and listened to the lectures and whatnot. <laughs> and I'm telling you, man, I can't wait to get my hands on some shit. Whatever kind of shit anybody will give me. That's what I want. And I'll do whatever that person asks and whatever it costs for it. I will. I know that's not what you want to hear, Mom. I'm sure that it makes you sick and hate me and that sort of thing. But I did learn that at old Twin Oaks, to be honest. They impressed it upon us most strongly and I walked away believing it. I mean, I told them all that other stuff too. All the crap they wanted to hear about me getting better and the like. But I do sort of believe this honesty thing. Just sitting here as we were driving, it came over me. The desire to be truthful. So there it is, the truth. I know I'm gonna relapse. Can't wait to, really. So if that means you want to turn this car around and drive me back, then I guess so be it. Figure that's what you do. Just get home, right? That's what everyone always thinks is best. Get home. <laughs> Everything will be okay if I can just make it back to the house. Good one, Mom. Do it. Keep on driving. Tell Dad. Call those emergency numbers when we get back to our place. That'll fix it. You bet. I gotta tell you, though, due to this whole honesty gig that I'm doing here, that I'll probably lie my ass off if you tell anyone about our little chat. I will. I'll tell them we got into a fight, that you're making things up. You know, my greatest hits. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Who's gonna believe you anyway? You, who calls dad at work, pulls him out of a staff meeting when the pool guys don't show up. Or when that one post office dude, the delivery man, was trying to break in. Remember that one? He made the mistake of opening the screen door and you had the police over in like 10 seconds. Yeah, I think I'll take my chances. So you decide. It's up to you, Mom. I wish I knew what movie that was that we were watching. I'd like to see what the beginning was like, or the name of it at least. I'm sure you guys would like it, you and Dad. After, when we finished smoking, all of us, there were maybe like six all together. We went back in and caught the end of it. The counselors were just wandering around doing their charts and making sure people took their showers. And the six of us kicked back and watched the end of it. They got caught, of course, that man and the lady. They turned on each other eventually. But then, somehow, it was okay. In court, I mean. Which we all cheered at when somebody gets off in court. But then, they get into a car accident. Yeah, so the police think he did it, this guy, for the money. 
So he ends up going to prison and getting executed for something he didn't even do, which is so, you know, funny. Not funny ha-ha, but the other one. Strange or ironic. It was funny ironic. That's what it was. You should have seen us sitting there, sitting around and watching this thing, stoned like we were, and laughing our asses off. We were, Mom. Just laughing and laughing and laughing. Even after they sent us off to bed, up there in the dark, in the other bedrooms, I could still hear some of the other people going at it, just giggling away all by ourselves. We found it all so damn funny. <laughs>